The next story was inspired by this viral photograph of an older gentleman. You can clearly see a strange resemblance to the Family Guy character Herbert in that one episode where he cross-dresses wearing a wig and a dress. The person who submitted this story provides a vague description of what took place the day the photo was taken, so we decided to spruce it up a bit and give you guys a dramatized version of the alleged occurrence. Here's what it looked like. Darling boy was a hidden heartthrob. Most college students hit the bars and parties right away, chasing after every pretty little thing that moves. He was saving himself for the right one, the only one. He spent most of his time in the library, as intelligent and diligent as he was. The library had everything a student like him could need. 24-7 access, free Wi-Fi, computers and books, and lots of peace and quiet. He didn't know it, but he had the refined philanthropist missus to thank for all those amenities. Late one evening, when the darling boy thought he was totally alone, a lonely spinster appeared before him, standing before the bookshelf by his usual table in the corner and inspecting the volumes. By the look on his face, the kind old woman knew she had gone to suspicion for interrupting his studies with her presence. What would such an old lady be doing in a college library? But all the matronly widow needed was to meet eyes with a young man just once, and then he was hers. She'd watched from afar for months, waiting for the right moment to reel him in. And now the moment was finally here. The two were alone, and she knew very well how to put the move on a reluctant suitor. She broke the enticing gaze and looked back to the shelf, asking with sultry nonchalance, What's your favorite book on the shelf, dear? Uh, I don't know. I guess the Encyclopedia of Snakes is quite interesting. She knew exactly where that book rested on the shelf and removed it without hesitation, setting it down on the table at which the young man was studying and came gracefully to sit beside her. So, you like snakes? Well, what do you like about them? The poor and experienced lad was already sweating bullets from nervousness. Clearly, he'd never even spoken with a woman before, let alone been with one. But that would soon change. Uh, I don't know. I just... Wait a second. Don't I know you from somewhere? You look exactly like Herbert from- Who? From what? Uh-uh, Sonny. The only person I look like is the most stunning regal woman you've ever laid your eyes on. Is that right? Um, yeah, a uh, woman, sure. Hmm, don't think about that other question. I have something more important to ask. Do you like popsicles? I mean, yeah, as a kid I did, but I haven't had one in years. Tisk tisk. I'm so sorry, Sonny. I keep asking the wrong questions. You're a little old for popsicles, aren't you? You're a man now, and you're after a different kind of sugar. So tell me, chisel specimen, you like hot blonde babes? Do you like floral dresses like this? Mm-hmm. Uh, look, I should get going. I have finals tomorrow Nonsense, and nonsense. Stay a little longer. Things weren't going well for the mistress. She felt like she was losing the young man to his own anxious inexperience. But if she failed in that moment, she would never get another chance to have this man she dreamed about for so long. She was cunning, however. With a little deception, she had one more card up her sleeve she could play. It was a risky move, but it would be worth it in the end. You're probably wondering why I'm dressed up like this, aren't you? Oh, no, it's fine, you know. People can express themselves however they want. I just want to get that same kind of attention that my scandalous granddaughter always gets. She's so hot, you would really like her. She goes here too, and she really enjoys making men out of boys. Yeah? What's she look like? She's a natural blonde. Nice and thick too. Great chest. I'm actually going to be picking her up from here in just a few minutes. Want to come along? The mistress knew that the lonely young man couldn't resist the temptation of a voluptuous woman's company. He agreed despite everything, disregarding his own anxieties and suspicions that the mistress was not truly who she said she was. A van was parked at the curb outside the library, waiting for the pair to climb aboard. The young man paused once more at the sight of it, but the mistress knew just how to make him forget about all his worries. My gorgeous granddaughter is waiting for you in the back, right on the other side of those doors. Go ahead, open it. He was reluctant, but he couldn't stop himself. He underestimated the strength and wit of the woman he was with, blinded by his need. As soon as he saw that there was nothing and no one inside the van, <gasps> she only had a moment to act before it was too late. 
muster in a feat of strength great enough to warrant the envy of man. She lifted her cane high into the air and brought it swiftly down upon the back of the young man's head. Ah! He fell forward without struggling. Nothing more than a limp rag doll in his unconscious state. The mistress used the last of her strength to heave the rest of his body back into the van and tie him down like any good woman should when he finally awoke. The look on his face was worth a lifetime of temptation. The sheer terror in his eyes as he realized he was tied up in some old man's basement with no idea where he was. And nobody who knew he had disappeared. Well, it's enough to get anyone going. Good morning, sweetheart. Are you hungry? I got lots of popsicles. If you get bored, I have your favorite book, too. Are you all comfortable? <laughs> Screw you, old man. Where's your granddaughter? <laughs> oh, I lied about that. <laughs> But at least you still have a hot blonde with a pretty dress to be with for the rest of your life. Come here. No! Get away, butt chin! Don't touch me! You're a sick man! No! Stop it! Get away from me or I'll kill you! I swear to God! And from that day on, the mistress and her darling little sweetheart lived happily ever after. <laughs> the next story was inspired by this infamous mugshot. Now, I know what you're thinking. This isn't a Family Guy character, so why is he in the video? Well, we couldn't help but include him as he fit the bill perfectly for this real-life cartoon look-alike series. For those that wanted only Family Guy characters, don't worry, we got you on the next story. For Beavis and Butthead fans, the pleasure is mine. This story happened around the early 2000s when I was in my mid-twenties. I worked as a full-time art model and posed for various photographers, painters, and even sculptors. It was a fairly straightforward gig, but the only downside was that I had to sit for at least three hours straight depending on the circumstances. I remember starting off by posing with just regular clothes on, but as time went on, the work slowly started shifting to more flamboyant attire. Eventually, the job entailed me to pose nude, as that was the demand of the current art class. I was high-key uncomfortable with the whole ordeal, but over time, I had gotten used to being a nude model while I accepted other gigs on the side. Weird stares and creepy old men became a natural thing for me, and as long as they knew their boundaries, I had no nothing to fear. One day, I posed for an art class that was being held at some local library near my home. I remember feeling nervous as hell as the room was filled with at least 30 to 40 artisans scouring at me with their eyeballs. However, despite being in the spotlight, I couldn't shake off the nasty feeling this odd-looking individual gave me. Amidst the crowd, my peripheral gaze focused on a man with slanted eyes and rat-like teeth, and at the sight of his overgrown head, it was like he was suffering from some kind of physical disorder. I tried to focus on my pose, diverting my attention to the other artists dedicated to their crafts, but the strange man sat and stared with his brush in one hand and a blank canvas before him. He sat ludicrously, not even attempting to paint a damn thing. And before I knew it, he began to giggle and drool simultaneously. <laughs> None of the creeps I've met before were as intense as he was, and so, to let him know of my distress, I locked eyes with him, showing him that I wasn't going to be intimidated and that he should get back to work. Moments later, he raised his brush and began to paint as he continued to giggle, but this time more maniacally. <laughs> <laughs> the other artists started mean mugging him while trying to concentrate on their canvas, but this creep wouldn't stop giggling under his breath. I began to feel paranoid that something from my body looked weird, but quickly brushed it under the rug as he was the only one that found me amusing. What's his problem? I asked myself. I wanted so hard to just get up and leave, but too many artists were engaged in their work, and I couldn't ruin it just because I was uncomfortable with a single creep. I attempted to give it a rest since there was no way he was getting close to me. However, the bizarre man chuckled incessantly, the intensity of his strokes gaining weight. Again, I glowered at him, hoping this time he would simply leave. Now the other artists were getting distracted. 
<laughs> However, he didn't stop. Instead, he continued to stare as he giggled and drooled a puddle, unfazed by the amount of attention he was beginning to draw to himself. And when he could no longer hold it in, he burst out in laughter, provoking me even further until I lost control of my temper, standing erect as I constantly yelled at him. <laughs> Everyone ceased to paint, their eyes fixated on the maniac who suddenly grabbed my clothes and ran out of the studio. Consequently, he left his brush and canvas behind. I requested the assistance of the staff who kindly brought me a towel and a new set of clothes when I was done modeling. Once I was good to go, I made it a point to look at the canvas <gasps> the creep left behind and was shocked to the core when I saw my home address and the front angle of my house meticulously painted. Naturally, I freaked out, showing the canvas to the staff. However, no one in the studio knew the creep's identity, making me more paranoid than I already was. While I was on the phone, my friends tried to quell my fear, but to no avail. Then, as I took my cab, my eyes wandered around the streets outside, afraid the creep was following me home, or worse, he might already be there hiding in the basement, attic, or amidst my clothes in the closet. When I arrived home, nothing appeared to be out of place, and although I wanted to report this to the cops, I didn't have a name or anything that could lead them to him. So, as the days went by, I constantly heard noises and occasional creaks throughout the house, prompting me to pause while preparing dinner and preventing me from hitting the hay. I assumed that I was paranoid and that making direct eye contact with him left me with nightmares whenever I had the chance to sleep. But still, there were no signs of him anyway, leaving me with a bit of relief. Then, one night, while sitting on a chair in my bedroom to watch a movie, the comfy pillows begged me to shut my eyes for a good night's rest. However, moments later, I felt something wet on the floor as I walked toward the bed. It was slimy and absolutely disgusting. When I noticed the strange liquid oozing from under the bed, I cautiously took a peek and was baffled to see the familiar smile and massive head of the creep who came to the studio days ago. <laughs> His eyes were a blackish hue and he drooled relentlessly. Then, without hesitation, he grabbed my feet, attempting to pull me under the bed. I lost my balance and fell to the floor. Then, we both struggled in a tug of war. You're not going anywhere, lady, the creep said. Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops! I replied, unwilling to give up. Then, I managed to break loose, kicking his large forehead. And as I got to my feet, I raced to the stairs until I exited the house with the maniac behind me. <coughs> where, where are you going, Mona Lisa? Daddy wants to paint you. <laughs> He yelled, then laughed ominously. I didn't respond. Instead, I kept running, and when I looked over my back, I noticed that he was wearing the clothes he had stolen from me the other time. Moments later, I approached a house nearby and banged on the door, screaming for help, startling the creep who hid behind the bushes. I need help! Hurry, please! The good Samaritans helped me out, and when I told them where the creep was hiding, he was eventually caught and reported to the police. Although I survived this ordeal, the incident unfortunately made me quit modeling. The next story was inspired by the individual in this mugshot. The person in question clearly has an insane resemblance to the Family Guy character Peter Griffin. His heinous crime took place in Bellevue, Nebraska at exactly 9.23 p.m. at a Sonic parking lot. We intentionally lightened his heinous crime, so to speak, just so we can showcase it here. But of course, we get the message across. Here's a dramatized version of the occurrence. In college, I worked at a Sonic with my twin brother and a few other mutual friends of ours from school. There weren't many job opportunities for full-time students in our hometown, but after a few months of pulling strings, my brother and I managed to get just about all the cool people we knew in on our Sonic gig. It was a good time most days. No matter how busy it usually got, we were always able to talk to each other and cut the tension, which made the fast food working conditions more bearable. 
That was until the franchise owner saw that we were an effective team when scheduled together and started giving us the hardest possible shifts. Things didn't last long once the boss caught on. The first night shift I ended up working was a brisk Saturday evening, one of the last days of holiday parties and festivities before the weather got too cold to voluntary travel through. It got pretty busy there soon after sundown, with a strangely immense number of Karens and soccer moms on top of the drunk crowd I was expecting. The Karens specifically were coming out in force that night. I can't even remember how many times someone whined about how slow the drive through line was when they got up to the window, or screamed in my face about how we should have a drive-in like most Sonic locations. As the shift dragged on, the constant berating began to aggravate me. I wasn't the franchise owner, and I had no part in the decision to run a Sonic out of some random old broken down diner, but of course I was the one dealing with these people's entitled opinions on the issue. They lived out in the middle of nowhere just like us, but somehow they were triggered by the fact that we didn't have an intercom to take orders in only one window. Still, I would have rather dealt with a million Karens than deal with the guy I ended up meeting that night. He rolled up to the window at the height of the rush, and for some reason when I saw the distinct shape of that red car, I got the strangest feeling like I was in a cartoon, that I'd been transported to some family guy cutaway, and I was about to be the butt of a joke at the hands of the entire Griffin family. Sure enough, when the window rolled down and I saw him clearly, it looked like I was staring into the face of the fat dimwit himself. <laughs> oh yeah, can I get 1,000 cheeseburgers? I laughed at first, thinking this whole situation would soon turn into a hilarious story I could share with my friends after work. <laughs> Hell no, he must be on that good good. What, did I say something funny? I, I mean... <laughs> Even if I wanted to, which I don't, I can't make you a thousand cheeseburgers, man. We don't even have a thousand cheeseburgers in here. Uh, well, what about a thousand hot dogs? You guys make them in more a quantity over quality way, don't you? Sir, I'm not about to make you a thousand of anything. There are other people in line. Place a reasonable order or pull away so we can help someone else. No, I won't pull away. I don't deserve this disrespect. Do you know the day I've had? This drive through order is all I have, you hear me? I have the munchies, and if I don't get what I want, you're dead. This is your fault. All I wanted was a thousand cheeseburgers, that's it. I know I'm a big guy, I'm not blind. But did you have to go rub it in my face? I kind of felt bad for him in a way, for making such a fool of himself. I tried to be reasonable with him, but that was a mistake. <sighs> Sir, I'm sorry that we couldn't fulfill the order you wanted, but I would still be happy to serve you if you would just accept one of our combo deals No! And Listen here, you liberal arts loser! I want 1,000 chicken wraps, and if I don't get them, there will be consequences! Just drop it already, it's impossible! Oh, you think it's impossible? You wanna see impossible? Watch this! Suddenly, but also very slowly and clumsily, the weirdo stepped out of the car. I slammed the window shut and took a step back, right before he pulled it back open and started trying to crawl through it. Ah! His face and arms were in, and he was swatting and grabbing at us like a giant baby. But of course, by the size of his waistline, he was stuck halfway through. I'll kill you like I killed that chicken, then I'll bring you back to life and kill you again! <laughs> Eject out of the window or I'm calling the cops! By then, the scene was being watched by the entire establishment. Eventually, after enough kicking and screaming, the man-child fussed himself out of breath and gave up squeezing himself back out of the window. That's when he began slamming his large sledgehammer fists against the window, causing it to crack. The staff behind me began to scream hysterically as I watched in a frozen state of distress. Then, the man got into his vehicle, driving off without all the thousands of fast food entrees he had a purely psychotic need for. After that, I breathed a sigh of relief and put the whole thing behind me. I laughed it off and cracked a few jokes with my brother who watched it all go down. 
then I forgot about it, figuring I would never see that guy again. But that night, when I finally got home, exhausted, I couldn't sleep. Despite trying not to think about it, the crazy Peter Griffin look-alike was living rent-free in my head. I just couldn't believe what I had seen. I doubted if it was even real. Either way, it was really messing with my head. The next day, I was so tired and messed up that I almost felt sick. I dreaded the reality of going back for the very next night shift. I felt bad for leaving my twin brother to take the rush by himself, but I was really trying to avoid any chance of seeing that man again. I ended up calling out of work and taking the day off. I still couldn't relax enough to sleep, so I spent the whole night watching TV. The whole time, there was a nagging feeling in the back of my head. Then, I got a call from my boss. Hello? Jim, I... I don't know how to tell you this, but something happened at the shop tonight. What? What happened? A man drove his car through the drive through window. Jamie and Rob are in the hospital, but... Your... your brother... He's... He didn't survive the no, impact. No, 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 no! My world began to spin. That was my twin brother. My identical twin. And I wasn't even there when he died. I just saw him at work the last night, not knowing that that was the last time I would ever get to see him. And I could have been there if I just had some grit and gone to work while I wasn't feeling my best. You just can't go back and undo things like that. The police ended up apprehending the guy, but the story only became more disturbing from there. He allegedly claimed that he did it out of revenge, but he said he failed at what he really wanted to do. He said he was trying to aim for me, but he mistook my brother at the drive through window for me since we looked so alike. No matter what happens to that sick, twisted man, it will never mean anything to me. Justice can never be served if it should have been me that died and not my brother. If I could go back and change things, I'd take his place in a heartbeat. Good morning, sweetheart. Are you hungry? I got lots of popsicles. If you get bored, I have your favorite book, too. Are you all comfortable? Ugh, screw you, old man! Where's your granddaughter? Oh, I lied about that. <laughs> But at least you still have a hot blonde with a pretty dress to be with for the rest of your life.